Right. Welcome to Socast. We like it. The main United direction. We have uh, UK and USA in the house off on a beautiful Valentine's Day that has turned into a heartbroken day by the United performers. Final score, West Bromwich have been won. Manchester United won. It is what it is. Uh, Josh joining us for the first time. What happened today, sir? Yo, um, we just we just didn't show up, you know. Um, so again, giving up a giving up a goal in what was it the second minute? I mean, we, uh, one we, minute we, thirty five seconds. Yeah, um, and 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 like I was I mentioned before, not just giving up a goal, but to be out jumped, you know, in the box, you know, the, the, their their striker getting in front of our defender to go and put it in like that, um, really kind of set the tone for the rest of the match. It wasn't just that one. Um, and then from there, you continue to see balls getting served in that we're not winning the headers, right? And so, um, you know, kudos to Bruno, had a great strike to, to, to level it, but you just never really saw us going and, you know, putting ourselves out there as the dominant team. I mean, it did, we, 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 we just, uh, we, we, like I said, we just didn't show up today. Right. Okay. You represent yeah. the UK. What what went wrong today, sir? Yeah, I just think the, the mentality wasn't right at all. After having five days off, which is probably the longest we've had off for a long time to get on the training grain and work on things. Uh, for me, it was crying out. We knew West Brom doing the relegation battle. For me, they're, they're down anyway, but we knew it was going to be long ball. What are Maguire and Lindelof not good at doing? Attacking the ball. The game was really made for bite. And for me, when when that when when that happened in the first minute and a half, when I saw the replay and the, um Lindelof was in front of the guy, the guy's yeah. come round him. Yeah. Punched this face in the head. I was like, what was Lindelof waiting for? Attack the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for when I saw that, I was just like, he knows he's made a big mistake. And then after that, he started being more aggressive, and it was like. You've already made the mistake. It's too late. You should be aggressive all the time. Then, yeah, from that, it was just like, I couldn't really see us dominating the game. We got that good goal, bit of brilliance from Bruno before half time. And I thought, this is the chance for us to kick on, make some substitutions. And it it, it, it didn't really change until Greenwood come on and changed it a bit. Van der Beek come on. But it's too little, too late with Oli. Like, you see the mistakes. A elite manager will change it at half time. We don't need two two holding players on against West Brom exactly. with Tommy and Fred. Like it's and today just shows how much we miss a player like Pogba to unlock things. Like it was almost like we were going back to where we were before. Every yeah. minute it was relying on Pogba. Yeah. We we're always relying on Bruno. And we, we don't have enough in our team to get us out of it. And the system, I think he needs to change the system, to be honest. Right. But the players we've got the formation like we didn't create anything for Cavani. I don't think he had a shot on target today. I had to look. Is I had to ask why is Cavani in this game? Because I honestly I've never seen Cavani disappear since his well known United shirt. It's like, did he was he there? I had to look. I kept checking my phone. Has he been substituted? He played 90 minutes. I mm -hmm. couldn't believe it. Yeah. No, he was MIA. Uh Bems, what happened today, sir? Well, I know, I know we spoke early in the week. Yeah, it's simple. It was a center back pairing, man. It, this point, that's just it. It's a center back pairing. Uh, Maguire, Lindelof. I mean, I keep saying this. They're going to keep costing us goals. I mean, um, it's just point blank simple. I mean, we shouldn't concede that goal. Lindelof is just weak. Um, and uh, I think Ole dropped the ball. If, as in, why didn't he play a uh, bye? I don't know. Bye is fit enough to be on the bench. He should be fit enough to play. Yeah. Um, so I, I think uh, um, Ole messed up on this one too. By the, the, the persistence of keep when he keeps playing Lindelof and Maguire, I, I don't know if he doesn't see it. I, I just don't know. It just doesn't make any sense. Th those two, they will keep costing us. Is when you have a strong defense, everything else just just plays in. Um, and and I also agree with with Kay that while we're playing, uh, um, is it McFred? Well, well, I, Fred and McTominay. It's just ridiculous. I mean, if you're not ha having McTominay push on a little bit more, then it then, then it makes no sense. Bruno is the sole person that's gonna try and create everything. Yeah, and, it was I mean, a lot a lot of responsibilities it, on him today. It's too much, and I mean, I, I mean, you see West Brom just sitting back. I mean, they were physical. They were going after everything. I mean, it's just man, it's just 
I mean, we, and we, we, honestly, we honestly could have very easily lost this game today. Because oh, they, yeah, had, exactly. they had several lose. opportunities that a better team exactly. would have finished. Umbayi, so. that guy, Umbayi, had – he could have got a hat trick. Oh, yeah. Because remember, there was yeah. that point whereby – I don't know what Maguire and De Gea were doing. I don't yeah. know what that. No, I think I, I, I think that was more Maguire. Maguire, I don't know, you know why he's just he's just trying to shield this player. Uh, what's yeah, it? just clear it or pass it. Yeah, just pass the ball to to to, to De Gea or just or just kick it to a corner. Just just get rid of the ball. And and if you look, that would have been game over because that if it won for the it won for De Gea, we're looking at. Zero points today, man. Oh, Those yeah. Double saves. The double saves. The double saves. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah saved us. Then so. the second one, that yeah, low cinematic. cross, Lindelof couldn't cut the ball out, and the guy skied the ball. That was game over at that point. Again, the center backs. The center backs. Center backs. Center backs. Center backs. So, so let me ask Josh. Josh, as we can see, the center back pairing is the same set pieces. Low cross, high cross into the box, not being able to deal with it. How many more games are we going to lose like this? Well, and and uh, honestly, I'm kind of with Bims. I'm I'm really questioning Ole at this point. I I, I don't know where his mind, where his head's at with this because it's like it, it seems like we're we're repeating mistakes over and over. The same. And like you know, they say definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing, expect a different result, right? Yeah. And we're doing the same thing. And we're getting the same results, the same results. We're conceding, you know? So that's why I say, I, I honestly don't know where his head's at with that. Cause I, I think we, we've got to make a change because otherwise it's going to keep happening. We, we saw this, uh, even, the, the funny thing is, it's, it's creeped in from last season to this season. We saw it against Sevilla. We saw it against uh, 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 PSG. We saw it this season. We saw it against Man City when we lost 2-0. We saw a cross in the box, couldn't deal with it. Everton, Sheffield United is the same thing. So you ask yourself, do they watch the video replays of the mistakes? Yeah, I don't well, get that. And well, and th this is what I'm this is what I'm wondering is because again, you you see certain things like that happening, and it's like if I'm the manager, okay, we're gonna address that during training, right? Like we're 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 gonna set something up so that we go and we hit this. But like you said, it's it, it's like we could you know you can go and take a clip from one match. And you could substitute it in the other match and you wouldn't know the difference because it's happening exactly the same way. So that, that's, why, that's why I say I just, from a management perspective, you've either got to go and hit that in training to make sure that they don't repeat that mistake. Or if they, if they show that they are going to repeat it, you've got to make a change. Okay. Yeah. Repetitive mistakes, same, same pairing, same kind of balls, low ball, high ball, set pieces. What's the problem? For me, I, it just shows that ollie has got his favourites. He's got people that, unless they're injured or not fit, he's going to play them regardless. We all we all predicted once by gets an injury or gets rotated out for a game, he's going to stick with Glendale from and Maguire. And for me, I think Ollie just he's, he 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 knew we weren't really going to win the league. He didn't want to say it or really say we're going for it. Right. He's content with being in the top four, right. saving his job and getting a new contract. And, and that's all he's focusing on. And when, when all he's under pressure, that's when he gets the results. When he's not under pressure and then things are going all right, then you see this dip. And this dip always happens. We go on a, a spike where we go on an unbe un unbelievable run, and then bam, crash, bam. We go on a run where I think we haven't won a game. How many games have... Well, Southampton was the last game we won. Yes. And again, Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United, no, Sheffield United we lost to, West Brom we drew with, Fulham, Everton, just, Everton. just about one, the Fulham game. So the bottom three, we're not beating them convincingly. No, we're, we're not. It, it took something special to beat Fulham. Yeah, exactly. Pogba. So it's just, for me, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's too little, too late. We didn't really get the players we wanted in the window. And for me, Ollie's, I think Ollie's just trying to get that new contract, to be honest. And stay in the top four. Like Europa League, people can forget that. FA Cup, if we get a good draw, that's the best we can get this season. Wow. Benz, same pairing, same set pieces, same long ball, low ball, high ball, low ball in the cross, same results. Yeah, it's the same, same thing. I mean, as I said before, I mean, 
mean, it, I, I mean, I, I've um, I've questioned Ole um, right from the start. I mean, yes, he's done he's done a good job. I'm going to give him credit where credit is due. We have improved, but again, it's the same the same thing that we see all over again. When you keep when you keep doing the same thing, you're not. I mean, is um, and, and I think Kay has said it before. I think Ole has reached his his uh, um, ceiling with this team. Um, um, like I mean, yeah, he's just content with getting top four. The um, the club are just content with getting uh, top four. Um, if you and it it, it 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 all lines up when it comes to transfers and all that stuff. If you notice, when we get out the top the top four, we if we don't finish top four they will spend money to get us back into top four. For some reason, financially, I guess, they don't see the big difference between fourth and first. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's the same thing all over again. I mean, I, I'm sorry, man, but Ole, Ole, like that favorite stuff has got to go out the window. Right. Um, and, and he needs to start figuring out, I mean, Bailly, obviously we all know Bailly and Maguire are the best center back pairing. Um, yeah, but he persists with uh, Lindelof Love and Maguire. It's going to keep happening. We're going to keep dropping points. And um, yeah, if Kerr is not taking, we might slip out the top four. Um, with a team like West Brom, who are, they're not exactly the best team out there. They just remind me of another Stoke City, long ball, high ball. That's it. Was it necessary for Ole to still play Lindelof? I mean, Fred and McTommy to sit in front of the back four? Josh? I mean, I think I think it's okay to start off, you know, um, to to go and see. But when when you see that it's not working, um, when you see that basically, uh, you know, that w- one thing is that we just weren't creative today. I mean, I, I when when I was sitting in Kings Court watching, I said every time we're on the ball, we just got people that are just standing there. There's not movement that's happening and stuff. And so I think it's like okay, you know that you're playing against a weaker team, so you start off with that to go and see. But if it's not working, you got to go and change it. Uh, and we, again, there, there was really kind of no progress that was made throughout the match. You know, it was just the same thing over and over. Um, and so again, that's why I'm also really questioning Ole and I'm, I'm, I'm with the other gents on this one is that I, I wonder if he has also reached his peak of where he can, where he can take us because a good manager, I mean, this is, I mean, this is what Sir Alex Ferguson was about, right? He always knew, you know, when things weren't working, the change to make, to go and change the momentum of the game. And I really don't see that happening with Ole. I can think of hardly any instances in which like the game was going against us and, or we weren't getting what we needed. He made the right change. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, now we're back in it. Right. And that was, that was the case today as well. I mean, it was just, it was just lackluster from beginning to end. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> was it necessary to play McFred in front of the back four against a team like West Brom for 90 minutes or like 85, 80 minutes? No, like the gentleman before said, to do it at the start, you can understand he's trying to stay safe, but to not change it at half time. And, the, and I put it in the group. The warning sign for me was when I saw the lineup, I mean, I had five defenders on the bench. I, I was thinking, what is the rationale with having five defenders on the bench against this isn't a Man City or a Liverpool or a, a team that's free scoring like we need create we've always needed creativity like we don't need that many de- defenders on the bench and yeah for me Oli doesn't wow so I'm going to quickly I'm going to quickly read the text games that's what he's very to make changes. He's very slow to... Like, bringing on Danny Dan Van De Beek with 10 minutes. This is a player that hasn't had a run of games. You're expecting him to do something in 10 minutes. It doesn't make sense. Give him 20 minutes or half an hour at least to get his match rhythm and to get into the game and the, the cohesion and the chemistry is just not there. Like, when Donny's got the ball, it's like, they look to give it to Bruno. It's like, we, before it was like, always oh, give it to Pogba, give it to Pogba. But it's like, give it to Bruno. Bruno will do something for us. And I, I just think the confidence in the team's low and we're just too reliant on too many, on, on too, Individual. too few players. Players, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to quickly read a text message that Chris sent. Yes, he sent it today in reference to what he said last week, uh, uh, this week. And uh, Bems will be my, was there as my witness. 
He said, my concerns are about the West Bromwich game. United are going to draw that game. United are going to drop a few more points this season. No chance of United winning the league. All it needs to be removed ASAP. That was what Chris said on Wednesday. Today is Sunday. And it has come to pass. Bems, you were there. Uh, it, it, it comes to a point whereby we, 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 we know after the Everton game, the title literally ended. I think today is now officially over. But there's something Kay mentioned earlier today. He said, Ole, in Ole's mind, he's not thinking of winning the title. He wants to get as high. And if they mistakenly win it, he could say, yeah, but not to put pressure on himself. It's okay to just say top four is the target. You see what I mean? Because he knows, I think Ole knows he doesn't have a good enough team to challenge. I, I, like I said, I, I watched City yesterday. I haven't watched City all season. If they're not playing United, I don't, I don't watch City. But when I watched them yesterday, I had to like, uh, wow. Uh, I can now see where United fans say this City team are very good. I, I looked at it like, wow. No De Bruyne, no Aguero. They play like a team that didn't even need those players. They tortured Spurs like a team, like a championship team and a Premier League team. Spurs were not even in that game at all. So I look at United's level and City's level. It's quite, uh, it's quite a, it's, we haven't bridged the gap quite a lot since Mourinho left. There's not much difference at all. Yeah. Josh, is it over now, officially? Uh, yeah, I think you have to say. Um, I mean, it's, you know, I, I, I you know, I'm a person just in general, I like to stay optimistic. And, you know, like we've said is that, you know, in football, anything can happen. You know, we, we've seen teams that were at the top collapse towards the end of the season. Um, but after, after the Everton match, and especially after this, you, you, you there, there's too many points to be made up. And, and again, for me, the, 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 the real issue is the, is the direction that we're going. You know, so we, we were saying like, okay, well, we've, we, you know, we've made an improvement over last season. And I was like, okay, well, that, that's true. But we're not continuing to improve this season. And that's what really concerns me. I would have preferred us to like, instead of going and getting up to the top of the table, you know, as soon as we did to go and kind of be hovering maybe around the, the final four and then finish off strong rather than like what we did where we peaked. And then now we're like coming back down because like, that's what worries me is it's like, okay, well, we're not continuing to improve. And right. that's why I say it, it goes back on to Ole, like as the manager, I want to see, I, I want to see continual improvement. And like, you know, like, like Kay was saying though, is that that our success can't be based off of the health of one or two players. You know, it, 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 we, we can't go and put all of our, you know, put, uh, put all our bets on Pogba being in there. And we certainly shouldn't have to have Pogba to beat a side like West Bromwich Albion. Very I mean, true. So that's why I just said, yeah, no, I think at this point we have to, um, we have to go and say that the title's really off the table at this point. You know, I, I, I never thought that it was a high probability that we could win, you know, back several weeks ago, I would say it was 20%. Then as we, you know, drop some things, okay, maybe it's down to like 5%. Now I think it's at zero. Um, <laughs> so, I, I see you went like, Ooh. oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. So at this point, I think we have to, the focus is no longer on competing for the title. Um, I think, you know, it would be nice to get some trophies, uh, you know, at least get a trophy. So let, let's see if we can get FA cup. Um, let's get, you know, let, let's go and, and get the top four. But my, my main thing right now is we need to go and get our momentum back. You know, um, we, 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 we've got to start, start focusing on, okay, how do we improve? And as it is right now, it just feels like we're getting worse over time, which is really worrisome. Bams. Well, it's over um, officially. I know. I know what you said it, during it, the week. It, uh, okay. Yeah. It's. It, it was never on. You know. It was never on. Even when we were first placed, it was never on. Um. I just. I never saw us win the title. Not in a million years. Not with the team we have. Not with the coaching staff we have. It's just not possible. I, I mean, I, I'm just gonna be real. I'm gonna continue to be real. Um. I, I, I mean, yeah, we peaked out. If you look. Look at the games we won um, is in uh, November, December. A lot of those wins were close wins, were narrow wins. Yeah, that we equally could have drew or two. lost. So if uh, if a team's gonna um, if a team's gonna win a title or they're gonna challenge, 
They're going to be winning teams convincingly. They're not going to be dropping that many points. Yeah, you can stumble here and there, but the next week you go back and then you show, okay, yeah, we're here to show a statement and you win it. You continue winning. Um, the coaching staff, Ole, I continue to say this. I mean, he needs, he, the coaching needs to improve. The reliance on Pogba and Bruno, that tells you everything. That means they're not, the team's not really coached. Like, what is the system of play? Look at City. I, I've said this so many times. De Bruyne, Aguero is not on the team. They're still killing teams, left, right, center. So, uh, I mean, they have a system that works. Um, I mean, it's the same same old story all over again, man. We were never in it. Um, no chance. I don't see us winning any trophies, man. I, I, no I, trophies, no, no I, FA Cup, no Europa League? I, I, I think, no. I, I don't see it happening. I, I just don't see it. These we've been we've been to four semifinals. We couldn't get away. We we we, we couldn't go further in the semifinals. We were knocked out of a, a Champions League Champions group. League. We were top of the um, of the group. We just all we needed was one point. We couldn't do that. It, it, I mean, the team has shown that they can't do it. So how do we all of a sudden just win an FA Cup? All it's right. Not- Let me ask you this. Before I go to K, say with this team, to improve this team, how many quality players will be needed? In what positions? Quickly. Benz. Okay, uh, we need we need we need three players. Um, say okay. Center back, for sure. Top class center back. We need a CDM. And um, I'll arguably say we need another winger, a right winger. Do we have a winger? Apart from Diallo, do we have a winger? I don't, because honestly, I don't think Rashford and Marshall are wingers. When I said wingers, those are inverted inside right and inside left players. They're not wingers, as in... Yeah, yeah, they're not wingers, but... They're not. They're not wingers, but out of all these people you mentioned, the best winger is Martial. Martial is a winger that can play. He can play nine. He can play 11. The reason why I say Martial is a winger, he has an inverted winger, but Martial, he will, he will dribble. Like his dribbling is very good. He will stick to that left side of the, of the wing and he will pass. He will make passes into the box. He, he does it like he, like he would do that. And, and also that one touch play and then he moves. He's good at doing that. Martial is a winger. Rashford is Radford likes to cut in. He's he's a selfish player. And when you're too selfish, you you're not really a true winger to me. Martial is not a selfish player, in my in, 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 in my opinion. Greenwood is selfish. Okay. So um yeah. that's why I think we should, uh, that's why I think we need another winger. Okay, is it officially over? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it was never on, to be honest. It was nice wow. to be there. It was nice to be there because we haven't been there for a long time. <laughs> Like Josh well, said, I, I it, it was say, nice to be there in January. Yeah. Some people uh, will screen save those pictures from January. <laughs> but nah. people were saying, oh, you've got to be in it to win it. Now, the people are still saying it's still mathematically possible, but you've got to look at the history. The, if you're watching the games, like you can't just watch Man United, you've got to watch the other teams. Yeah, I, I, I took the time yesterday. Like I said, yeah. I don't watch City. I don't watch yeah. Liverpool. If they're not playing United, I don't care. I just check the results. I sat down with a cup of coffee, my biscuits. I like, wow. You know, I, you know when you're in awe of a team, but you don't want to say that because it's not your team, but because of the love for the game. You're like, what? Now I begin to see what people in UK in America are saying, like, City are a good team. Because yes, I saw that I think of the City earlier in the season who was struggling. It's a yeah. completely new team now. Yeah. But, but you know why they were struggling? Change, um, Pep's changed the system. From, from the back four, the start of the season, the only person that's playing there now is Cancelo. Uh, Kyle Walker's not in there. Oh, um, I noticed Kyle Walker's not there. not in there. Mendy's not in there. He's re- the whole team's been transformed. And they haven't even got Aguero or De Bruyne playing. So yep. the way they play, they play they're selfless. They play for the team. In my team, in, in United, the front three, they're not looking for the best or easiest chance. They're not looking, oh, I can score. No, let me lay it off for a tapping. Whereas Man City, it's about everyone has to do what's best for the team. 
Right, I know, and, I um, saw. And that's right, Gundogan. He, he Gundogan wasn't even really playing, and he's come out of nowhere. He's their main guy, mate. Like, yeah, he scored, I think, four or five in the last three, four games. So I, I asked a question in the forum yesterday. It was a cheeky question, like, is it the same transfer market we all go to? Why they get done quality? Why can't we get them quality players who make differences? Isn't it the same because transfer we, market? It's because no, we don't have... system. Pep has a system. Josh. He knows the players he wants. Right. Whereas Man United, we, we'll just get players that are a mismatch. They might not even suit our philosophy. They might be the right player for a certain manager, but it's like, we just get the player that we want. We don't get the player that's right for our system. Right. Josh, what do you think? Why do City get the quality, those elite players who can make a difference? Why don't you not take goal for them kind of players? We, we have like two or three. They have like... I watched the game yesterday. Every player was comfortable on the ball. Every player. I'm thinking, is it the same transfer market all the teams go to? Or is this an elite market for City only? Yeah. Well, I think it's a, there's a couple of things here. One, the, the amount of money that, uh, you know, when we talk about billionaires, not all billionaires are created equal. And so mm -hmm. you've got the Glazers and they've got a few billion. You're talking about the people that are funding city are like billions and billions and billions. So I think one funding wise, they, they are on a different level, even though the Glazers are wealthy. Secondly, you know, I said, uh, I said earlier, like, oh, well, it'd be nice to go and have some silverware. Well, from the Glazers perspective, they've already got a silverware. It just happens to be the Super Bowl rather than uh, rather than anything on the other side of the pond. And so what I'm saying is I, I just, I don't think that I see, I, I, I don't know that the Glazers consider Manchester United to be the jewel, you know, in their crown of, uh, you know, of their empire. I, I, I think it's something that was, was kind of done. I, I, who knows, maybe as, uh, you know, they thought it was nice to have, but I just don't really see them being committed to, to going and winning. And so, it, you know, when you have when you have those two things, one, they don't have the same kind of oil money that's coming into into city, and two, I just don't know that they necessarily care as much, um, you know, and and they certainly haven't shown a commitment to going and getting the players that we have needed or wanted, um, you know, uh, we've just been trying to be stingy and all of this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I I think from an ownership perspective, you know, we're we're minor league compared to city. What? So you, you saw, uh, 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 Josh, you're, you're, you're an American, true and true. You've seen how they went to go and get Tom Brady. You saw the results. Yes. Instant, boom. This is his first. This was his first season, right? First season. He's trying. He after I uh, forget what twenty some odd seasons with the uh, New England Patriots. Right. Patriots released him because they're trying to rebuild and stuff. Yeah. And they went. They went and got him. Well, not only did they they, they got Tom Brady, but then um, they also got Rob Gronkowski. Did Gronkowski like, play for Patriots as well? Yes, he did. I, I, so, I thought so. I thought so. I heard that name before for yeah. Patriots. And so wow. they and so they ended up going. And Gronkowski had retired. Had retired. Oh, he had? Yes. No way. Yeah. He had yeah, he retired, retired, and then Brady convinced him to come out of retirement and play with them at Tampa Bay. Um, so, anyways, it, you, you could, like I'm just saying, they like. It, you, there just seems to more, be more of a commitment and a caring to that. Whereas like Manchester United is just kind of a vanity project where every so often let's jump on a plane, hop over the pond and go sit in the owner's box. <laughs> you know? uh, this, this wow. wow. Yeah, I, I, ben. In, 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 in my opinion, um, I think uh, the issue with United um, when it comes to transfers, we don't have competent people in charge. It's just simple. Um, if you if you you can go look at it, um, we are known as a club. We are known as a joke of a club uh, when it comes to negotiations, when it comes to transfers. Every every team knows that, so that is going to reduce the interest for players to come to us. Um, you can look at when it how long it takes to negotiate for a player. I mean, I mean, we drag and drag and drag and drag on. We don't have a director of football. City, yes, they have oil money. But me personally, I feel that United have, we have enough money to go and get the right structure in place, to get the right manager, to get the place to win a title. We have enough. We have, a, uh, uh, um, we have owners that take money out of the club every year. Um, I think they've taken about 90 mil out of the club since for the past five years. Um, 
So that tells you a whole lot. They take money out, but they don't really invest that much in the club. They bought the club on debts. Debts not been paid off. We all know that. Yeah. So, I mean, you can, everything is just not, I mean, that is why when City goes and sees a player, they get him. When we, when we are competing for a player because of our lack of, I mean, because we don't have football people in charge, we don't know how to negotiate, we don't know how to sell ourselves, we're not, we're just a joke of a club really. It's hard to to get like those players. It's simple. Wow. We have a top manager, they do. They have a structure, we don't. Our ownership don't like to spend the money, they do. It's not hard, it's simple. Okay. As we know, uh, what, uh, like I said, the quality, why can't we get good quality? Okay, the analyze of the owners, the, 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 the price of negotiation. We, we, how many more cycles are we going to keep going round and round and round and saying the same thing? All right, so there, was a, there was a question Joe mentioned earlier uh, last week. He said, we had Louis van Gaal, a serial winner, failed. Joe Mourinho, a serial winner, he failed. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is not even in that category. Is So what kind of manager do United need now? A serial winner, a non-serial winner, ex-player? What do United need? For me, it doesn't really matter who the manager is until, like the, the guys are saying, until the structure changes. Like Previously, Van Gaal, even going back to Moyes and Mourinho, they all wanted players. They never got the players they wanted. They got the exactly. B or the C, the third or the fourth choice sometimes. We're Man United. We're one of the best clubs in the world. We shouldn't be settling for second, third or fourth choice. We should be trying to get, even in the coaching, we should be trying to get the best, the best coach, the best um, physios, the best medical staff, the best director of football. We should be trying to get the best, but we've just got a system where they've got people in place that are just making money. And until they stop making money, nothing's going to change. So as long as we're getting these, okay. this revenue coming in and in and in, winning the Premier League, that's not a big priority to the to the players. That might cost them two to three hundred million. And they're exactly. going to lose money. They're not going to earn money from that. But stay, I always say, we're, we're the new Arsenal when Wenger was staying in the top four. Yeah. All we're bothered about is staying in the top four, projected revenue coming in so we can sort of see what we can spend without really dipping into our pockets. Well, well, Man United, our reserves have not even got their own ground. They're training in Lee. I mean, they're playing Lee and it's not our ground. We're, the, we're one of the only academies. We don't have a... I think Louis van Gaal wanted to get a ground for our academy players and he's, all the plans, the drafts were all in place. Took it to the owners. The owners said no. They don't want to spend the money. And this is Man United. Yep. <sighs> so now on, that United... On, yeah. <laughs> so as, 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 as it stands, United, some say we were never in the title race. It's officially over today. Let's quickly go over to the player ratings. I just need to give me the score, 1 to 10, and we're going to work it from there. I'm going to start with Josh. David De Gea today. Uh, De Gea, um, I think I'll give him a seven. Um, I, I, I think uh, he, he did make, make some good saves um, when, and, and saved us on a, um, a few items. So, I, I mean, again, like we said, the, the, the issue was not goalkeeping today. Uh, the, the, the issue was the, was the defense. I mean, even that, that first goal, that header occurred, what, in the, like six yards away, right? Yeah. I, I, you know, it, it, it's pretty tough to react that quickly um, whenever it, it, it's that close to you. Bams. Yeah, I agree with the seven. De Gea was um, pretty much, pretty much man the match. To be honest with you, if 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 he doesn't make those double saves, <laughs> it's over. So uh, yeah, De Gea, De Gea did nothing wrong. I think he did a good job. Again, this is it's the center backs that messed up today. So okay, so. I'd say seven. He was our best player. He wow. he stops the things in the game, basically. So. He was, after the, the criticism, I don't know if you saw it, over here on Sky Sports, they did a segment before the game where they were going back to the mistakes he made in 2011. So there's a little bit of an agenda against him at the moment where... I could see there's a, the, the, the English press are having an agenda yeah, against yeah, yeah. The, the, at the currently at the moment. 
that yeah, is, yeah. United need to get a new keeper. What the yeah. hell? And, and I think that's rude because he's the highest paid player in the club. I think that's where it stems from. Ah, okay. Uh, Luke Shaw. Okay. Six. Six. Wasn't one of his best games, but... Yeah. I don't think he was terrible, but... Like, like I said, when, when when Rashford plays on that side with Luke Shaw, they've got a good chemistry, but when he's there with Marshall, it's, it's not the same. It's not right. the same at all. But right. yeah, I'd say six. He wasn't great, but he wasn't terrible. Bems, Luke Shaw. I... I um I agree with a six. Six is a is a fair score. Um, I mean I might give him yeah six. Six is but yeah he he did get the assist. Um, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't one of his best games. But yeah, yeah I've seen him play better recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 played better, but uh, yeah, he definitely was not the worst player on the pitch today. That's for sure. So six is fair. Josh. Yeah, and, and I think I'd probably even just give him a five simply because it's like we said is that, we okay, it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was like completely middle of the road. I mean, it was just it, it was just like this lukewarm, you know, which was actually for the same for m- most of the players today, I'd say. All right, Josh, staying with you. Juan Bissaka. <sighs> Juan Bissaka. Um, I think I'd probably give him a six. Um, uh, you know, uh, it did seem uh, many times, uh, again, I, I felt like, like you said, that the players knew what was on the line today or whatever, and there just wasn't a whole lot of energy that I kept, um, that I felt coming from them. Juan Bissaka did seem like he was actually, you know, trying to make an effort, get in and do these things. But again, at the end of the day, um, you know, really just kind of a, you know, lackluster performance. Bams. Six, five and a half, six. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, <laughs> he wasn't spectacular today. I mean, yeah, he, 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 you could tell he was getting forward a lot. Yeah, he did get a lot. He did go for. He was bombing forward a lot yeah, he, this today. He was bombing forward a lot, and um, I mean, yeah, I think he was just average, man. Nothing spectacular, man. So uh, yeah, I mean, five and a half, six, man. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta agree. He's five and a half, six. Like they said, he got a lot forward a lot, but when there's a low block, there's not a lot of movement. It's like they're they're, they're expecting miracles from our fullbacks, and it's not something they've ever done for a long time. So for them to do some uh, that's not really their game, yeah. I think Luke Shaw just edged it obviously because he got the assist. But yeah, I'd say five yeah. and a half, six. Living, right, let's really move on. Uh, uh, Maguire, staying with K. <laughs> oh gosh, I, I'd have to go. Don't, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Say as you feel it. I'd say a four. I, I was close to giving him a three, but as as a leader on the pitch, no presence. The the the, the incident where he was trying to hold the player off, he falls down. It's not the first time he's done that. There was a game he did it. He fell down on the floor. The game played on. He didn't. That was against Everton. Run. Everton. Everton, yeah. He, he didn't get up and try and run back. And for me, you, you're the captain of Man United. Through my childhood, the captain of Man United, generally, until they started giving it to Valencia and Ashley Young, you were the best player <laughs> on the pitch. You were never in, in doubt with you me. Were, yeah. You will be on the bench. Maguire has not fulfilled that. When things go wrong, I don't see him making an impact, taking charge. He, he just doesn't, and, and and the thing that gets me with, with, with him is the press conferences. He's like, we need to do, but it's all it's almost like it's scripted every time. He doesn't say, I did I did bad today. I need to improve. It's always we we we. It's a it's a carpet play, and it's not it's not good enough for me. Ben Maguire. Oh man, oh man, terrible, terrible. I'm struggling between the three and the four too, man. It's just feel free to drop whichever one you man, want. Man, I, I, I'm struggling, man. I guess a four is is just fair. Yeah, that's okay. He he was he was terrible, man. This guy is not a leader, man. He's not a captain. I don't know. Man, he doesn't take ownership for nothing, man. It's like at least just 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 blame yourself for once, man. Even if it wasn't your, your fault, but just. Just, just say, you know what, it was my fault. I should have done better as a captain. He's never done that. I mean, the guy is, 
Oh man, it's not his fault he costs 80 mil. I totally agree, but man, the guy is the guy is terrible, man. He was yeah. Josh. Yeah, so well, let, let me also make sure that I'm getting it right. Um was it was it Maguire that ended up uh, putting the header off the post? Yes, that, he okay. had that last minute glancing header, which was yeah. well done. Did the keeper save it or the keeper parried onto the post? The keeper got just a fingertip touch. To it was it. yet, yeah. Um, I think he parried so, on. so that that that's why I I think it's interesting, like how much a fingertip can change the game. Because oh, yeah. I I was thinking about okay, let's say Maguire had scored that, how would we how would we be rating him now? Um, a, a plus five and a six. Right. Um, so that's why I would say I, I'd agree with them. You know, you're you're a leader. Your expectation is that you're going to go and do more than he did. Um, but again, the fact that he got that close to actually going and winning the match right at the death, um, you know, that was only denied just by a, a good save by the keeper. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give him a four. If it wasn't for that, I would have gone three. Right. All right. Stand with you. We're now moving to the midfield thread. Oh, Fred. What about Lindelof? Uh, oh, sorry, Lindelof. Lindelof. Yeah, you forgot. It was that bad. You forgot of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Um. No, Lindelof. I think I am going to give a three. Just um. You know, just for all the reasons we've already discussed. We don't need to rehash this. But he he's just he's just not getting it done. Brems. I, I agree with the three, man. I agree with the three. Worst. Worst player on the pitch, man. You you cost us the goal. Oh man, guess yeah. yeah. I can't talk too much. Three. Okay. <laughs> yeah, same three. To 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 not be away a minute and a half into a game. You know what? They're West Brom are about. Go and attack the ball. It wasn't the first time. He got bullied a few times, but it, to be honest, it's not his fault. He's been put in a position where. It's not his strength, but for me, it's just like, how long are you going to let him get away with? Not The game that always comes back to me was, I think it was on the Mourinho, Brighton. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ball over it, the top. It, yeah. And it's just, attack the ball. If not attack the ball, put the player off at least. Don't just stand exactly, there yeah. and be a victim. Yeah, so three for, three for me. Wow. But easily have been a two. We'll go to the midfield now. Fred. Okay. Oh, Fred. Yeah. Didn't do much. He had a few shots, which he's not going to do him. I'd, I'd say four, yeah, five. I'd give him a five. Like right. he, he could have, he could have easily have come off today a lot earlier. Yes. Just to, because we didn't need him and McTominay. And obviously McTominay is a goal threat. As long as he's getting forward, box to box. But today was a great game for him. But these sort of games are not built for him. He's built for games where we're playing the better team, where we needed to break up pass. These sort of games, I'd rather have a Mata or a Van der Beek or a Matic because they're not going to... We know what they're about. Very, you're, you're, very very correct, bro. you're very correct. It's not a very high-tempo game. It was used I to totally something. Agree too. Bams. Uh, Fred. Uh, Fred, five. 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 Josh? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. And I also just want to comment on, uh, I think they're exactly right, is that it, it's amazing the difference in our performance whenever we play better teams versus worse teams. You know, we, we, we play lower teams and then all of a sudden it's like we forgot how to play football. Uh, You're very you correct. Know. You're very correct. And, and that's, that's really one of the things that holds us back from being a great team is that, you know, okay, it's great to be able to play well against good teams, but you've got to pound the teams that are at the bottom of the table. Yep. And we're not doing that. Right. Right, staying with you, McTominay. Yeah, McTominay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go and give him. I'll go and give him a five. Um, five. Again, it's uh, you know, like I said, with so much of the team, it was just kind of just you know, it, it was just kind of a whatever performance uh, today. So um, yeah, I go with the five. Uh, uh, Bams. I agree with the five. With Tommy five. and Fred, pretty much similar to. Right. Okay. Five as well. Five he, had a, he had a chance that was cleared off the line. But for me, we yeah. Tommy, in, a, in a game like this, if you're not letting him go forward, he's wasted. Right. He just, yeah, it was, it was just uninspiring in performance. So, yeah, five. 
Right. Let's go to Bruno. Okay. Bruno, I'd say um, it's it's typical Bruno of late. To be honest, he's not been playing great, but he comes up with a goal. He makes something happen. So I don't want to boost him up to a big score because he scored. But I'd say actually you got to give him credit because. He, he, he made something out of nothing and he didn't smash it. He, he, it was a nice technique. So yeah. I'd give him a seven, to be honest. On the yeah, weaker him, foot. Yeah, on his weaker foot. He made and he scored just before half time, which was crucial. Yeah. yeah. If we would have gone into the half time in the changing room at 1 0 down, second half, I think we would have struggled. So he scored at a very crucial time. So I'll, yeah, crucial. I'll give him a seven. Bams, Bruno. I give Bruno. I give Bruno six and a half today. Six and a half, um, just for the goal. Um, it was uh, wasn't wasn't spectacular from Bruno, but he did try to make things happen. Um, and again, playing against a team that was at low block. So, but Bruno tried. But I I I, I don't think Bruno was 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 really spectacular. I think um, a six and a half for scoring the goal. Um, he doesn't get a, as high enough score as De Gea for me because I think De Gea, to me, De Gea is my man of the match, but Bruno, six and a half. Right. Josh, Bruno. Yeah, no, I think six and a half is the right score because like, like Vince was saying, you can't, you can't score him as high as De Gea. Um, De Gea was really probably the, the, the best player there today. Um, but I remember when we were in King's Court, right before that goal, we had specifically just gone and said, man, like Bruno is struggling today. You know, he just, he's, he's just not looking himself. And then he goes and has that moment of brilliance, right? I mean, it was, it was, it was a great hit, you know? And so we were saying, I think like that's, that's a sign of a really quality player is somebody who doesn't put their head down, right? And say, oh, I'm having a bad match, right? Um, that, you know, even though he was playing badly up to that point, he managed to go and still make something happen. Um, and so, yeah, for that, for that reason, definitely not his best match, but that, that he was able to still pull that out, I think six and a half is fair. Right. Staying with you. Uh, let's go to the front three. Let's start with uh, Ra uh, Marshall on the left. Uh, Marshall, um, I'd give him a five as well. Um, uh, again, like like so many other players, you know, not uh, nothing spectacular, nothing bad, just kind of uh, just really, I, I would just say that so many of our players today had forgettable performances, right? They didn't do anything that either good or bad that really stood out. They were just right. kind of like, whatever. Okay. Bams, Marshall. He's my guy, man. He's my guy. But um, yeah, he didn't have a good game today. Um, I think a five is fair. He he wasn't really impactive um, in that game. Um, yeah, it's yeah, they not a good game. And it wasn't really his fault. It's just as the whole team, we just didn't play well. Um, yeah, five. <clears throat> okay. Wasn't wasn't a great game for him. I'd give him a four, but for me, it's you know he's low on confidence. You put he shouldn't really have started to be honest. I would have I would have brought him on as a sub actually. Yeah, exactly. But for me, he just he did a few good things keeping the ball moving. But in a game like this, this game's not. It's it's like what I was saying with Fred. This game isn't built for Marshall when you're nil nil trying to get a goal because the way we play. It's not really suited, and you're playing him on the side where I think Rashford would be better on. So for me, yeah, I'd give him a four. He wasn't, he's struggling at the moment, and I think what we're doing is we're playing too many players when they're struggling, and it's it's killing their confidence more. Right. Okay. So, yeah, Let's move to uh, Cavani, Josh Cavani today. So Cavani, I have to say, is one of the players that I was I was more disappointed in. Um, you know, a lot of people had it just kind of a whatever game, but Cavani, and really for the first time that I can remember, was just MIA. You know, I, 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 I don't it. I don't know I don't know where he was today. You know, it, it was just like I remember going, I said, is Cavani still on the field? You know, because you just didn't, and that's like was really uncharacteristic because normally he's the guy that goes and actually is able to make an impact even when other people are not. So for me, I I, I found that really really disappointing. So he gets a four for me. Right. Okay. Cavani. Probably the worst game we've seen Cavani in ever. 
he didn't have a lot to feed on, but he he just didn't have a presence today. Like the fact that the hair was tested more than Sam Johnson, like someone that's not called it, they said X Man United go keep Sam Johnson. He's gonna have a blinder today. It, it didn't happen. It was like the hair had a blind and we didn't really even test Sam Johnson. It was just yeah, lacklustre and it was disappointing from one of our elite players. I expected a little bit more charisma and um, a bit more leadership. So, yeah, yeah, it wasn't great. I'd probably give him a three, to be honest. Joe, welcome back to the show. We're on the player ratings. Uh, Cavani today. Uh, Cavani, I'll probably just give him like a, a four. He didn't do much with the, he didn't really get that much service. And with what he was given, he didn't really do much with it. So, yeah, just a plain old four. Bems. Uh, Cavani, four, four and a half. Yeah, he wasn't his best game, but he didn't get any service, man. He, get no he, didn't, get any, he, he didn't get anything. He, he, he hardly, he didn't get anything to bite on. Like it was, he was, like, he was still he, making a lot of moves off the ball, though. So that, yeah, yeah, making a lot of moves. Up, yeah, yeah, but I, I mean, he, he didn't get anything. He didn't get anything. Like, no, nah, even uh, the scraps, striker, he was not even getting, the getting if, if I'm a striker, if I'm not getting chances, I can't do anything. I can move around all I want. I could do if I'm not getting the ball. Cavani, I mean, we weren't making that many crosses into the ball, sorry, um, uh, into the box for Cavani. And even when we did, it wasn't, uh, um, it didn't get to Cavani. It just, nope. And, and plus, Cavani was was really like like he was like followed closely. He he was defended very well. Like they they defended. Yeah, yeah. they stepped to Cavani. I so mean, it, yeah, go he, on. It's, it's not really Cavani's fault, really, in my opinion. He he, he didn't get nothing, zero. Right. Right. And that's why we did, because we didn't play well. We didn't get the ball enough to him, so he's not gonna have a good game. Right, because even I mean. Even though Marshall had a bad game, Marshall still had opportunities to run down the left. Cavani didn't even have that opportunity at all. I had to ask, like Josh, is he? I thought he was substituted, but he still played the full 90 minutes. I didn't see him. Right, let's move on to Radford. Josh, Radford. Um, Rashford, I think I'm going to give, uh, a, give a, uh, a four. Um, I was also a little bit disappointed in him. Um, the thing that, that kills me about Rashford is that he, he did it what was that, in the game against Everton and he did it again today where the ball comes to him in the box and he wants to go and cut inside and, 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 and take on the defender instead of going and getting a shot on goal. Um, and he keeps doing this over and over and over again, and it never seems to pan out. He never ends up actually getting a shot on goal. So it's like one thing if you, okay, you cut inside to give yourself a better shot, but he never actually ends up getting it off at all. We end up going and losing it. And he did that again today. He's done it in the past. And so I just, I, I think that, um, I think that Rashford has tons of talent, but I really do think that he's, he's been under, underachieving recently. Right. Okay, Rashford today. I'd probably 4.5 or 5 maybe, but for me, Rashford's the same old. He, he looks low on confidence like Marshall. For me, he holds on to the ball too long and he's too indecisive. And going from what he was like last season to now, like, that's not progress. You're, you're coached by one of the the sharpshooters, the goal poachers for United Legends. Everyone said, oh, Ollie's made him a better a better striker. And it, it's, it's, it's like he's gone back to his old self. He, like, um, as Josh was saying earlier, he had a chance where the ball came to him, hit it, but he's taking it back on to his other foot. Then try then to come back on the other foot again. Yeah, like, put your foot through it. Get the shot off, make the keeper work, and give them something to think about. Because he's getting too predictable now. He's always trying to do little steps left and right. When you're wide, fine, do that. If you're trying to commit a man one-on-one. -on -one. But when you're in the box and congested, you ain't got time to do that. Yeah, sometimes you just have that split second. Split second, yeah. Joe, Marsh, uh, Rashford. Rashford, same thing. Um, four, solid. I mean, yeah, it's it's just that whenever he does those things, it, it kind of kind of reminds me of... Um, Pereira. Remember when Pereira would just try some shit on the midfield? Like, wait a minute, you're not that guy. 
you're not that guy we expect to, to move the ball that way because he always loses possession, you know? And yeah, that the running straight at defenders and losing possession is just, it's mind boggling. It, what makes it even worse is when there are easier options to the left and to the right of them. Um, I think his overall game has gotten better off the ball, right? His movement off the ball has gotten a lot better. And I think that's, you know, a testament to um, Ole and both of that. But his decision, his decision making is still very shocking sometimes. And um, yeah, we can't, as much as we like to look at him as um, Rashford that, you know, that scored on his debut at Liverpool, scored on his debut at Emirates, you know, all of that. Um, he def- he He's at the point where he needs to take his game uh, uh, to the next level or he might, the, the team might actually start looking for an alternative, you know, or if maybe somebody from the, I don't think there's anybody in the academy that can take, you know, take his spot, but yeah, four, four Ben, Rashford. Oh, uh, Rashford was piss poor, man. Standard. I mean, I mean, yeah. I, I, I've been, I've been um, talking about Rashford that he keeps going down blind alleys. He, he loses the ball a lot. I mean, he doesn't like. He just gets the ball. And he just wants to dribble, and he always nine times out of ten he's gonna he, he's he's always gonna lose it. I, I mean, there's there are players running with him. He can lay the pass, but he chooses to always go at three, four defenders. I mean, it's the same old thing with Rashford, man. He's, um, to me, I mean, yes, he scored goals. He scored a lot of goals. Um, but I, but when fans start to bring up his, oh yeah, he's, uh, he's this off the field. I don't care about all that. I care about what I see on the field and Rashford is not, he's not really doing it for me in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's standard, the same. I mean, Rashford needs to improve, man. He really needs to. Right. Staying with you, Van der Beek, came on. Van der Beek, I would give Van der Beek um, a five. Um, five. I mean, he, he came in and did his job. I mean, he couldn't do anything. He didn't really have enough time to really impact the game enough. Um, I think he only he came in at, what, 70, 75th or 76th minute. Um, a, a player that's not given enough games, um, quality player that's sitting on the bench, um, he, he, I mean, he's not giving enough time. I mean, he didn't really impact the game. He just came and did his job. Five, nothing spectacular. Oh, uh, all right, Josh. Yeah, no, I think the same. Uh, a five, you know, he really wasn't. You know, again, it, nothing really to to point out. And Vanderbeek, I, I wish they would give him some more time because I I don't think he's really gotten the chance to really kind of get stuck in with this team just yet. So, okay. Yeah, same. He got, what, just over 10 minutes? It's not enough time for him to impact the game. It's almost like Oli's setting him up to fail. So like what wow. do you expect him to do? He's not... This isn't the United team of all where someone could come on and do what he might have done or a Sheringham or Cole or York. It's, he's in a position where... It's like Oli wants him to be the Bruno understudy, but... He doesn't need to be that guy. And the way the way he plays, he plays one touch quick football, and we don't do that. So it's yeah, yeah. It, you're putting him in a system that he's never played, and it's exactly. it's one touch quick of him, and then it slows down, and then it goes back. It's like what he's trying to do is speed it up to make them think, but then we just nullify everything he does. So yeah, it's it's just a mismatch to be honest, and I feel sorry for the kid. Joe, are you with us? Joe there. All right, let's go to the, our next player who came on. Uh, we had Mason Greenwood. Bams, Mason Greenwood. Uh, Mason Greenwood came and he did affect the game a little bit. He did. He did. Um, he had the shot saved by the, the keeper. Game. He had a shot saved by the keeper that could have gone in. So he did affect the game a little bit. So um, I mean, uh, that's a tough one, man. Um, I'll say a five and a half, six six for coming on and making an impact. He, he clearly didn't make an impact and um, he was trying to make something happen, almost scored. So yeah, five and a half, six, six, I think it's, it's fair, yeah, six. Okay, Mason. Yeah, same six. He did what a sub ki- sub's meant to do. He came on, affected the game, made things happen that weren't really happening. 
And yeah, he's been played out of his position. He's still trying to make stuff happen. So yeah, I'd give him a, a six. Josh. Yeah, uh, likewise, I would say a six because he, you know, un unlike some of the others, um, he actually did make some kind of impact. Uh, you know, you actually did notice whenever he came on. Right, Joe, Mason Greenwood. Yeah, Mason, solid six. Um, yeah, it seemed like he was a bit more of a spark than uh, Martial was. The fortune was happening to him, but yeah, it's, unfor it's unfortunate he wasn't able to get that goal off. I still feel like he's not as confident as he used to be. Uh, yeah. I've seen him a lot of times. You know, it's almost as if you can time before, after, it'll take like three step overs, shift to the left, boom, you know, but now it's like he's diddling. You know, everybody's looking for, we're in that mode where all, we're all looking for the perfect shot. Yeah. Again, you know, instead of just, God, let's get some shots on goal. Like, I, I wish Ole just like told him, okay, for the next five minutes, Let's just hammer this motherfucker, you know, just just get at the goalie, just to keep him, you know, just to keep him honest, you know. But yeah, I'll, I'll give him like maybe a five or six. Right. Now, uh, the, uh, Ole, uh, we're gonna talk, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's performance today. Josh, as the, as the, uh, his selected team, his substitution, and his tactics today. What are you gonna rate Ole? Um, honestly, I'm gonna give Ole a three. Um, because like I, you know, like I said before. You know, it, it's fine to start off, you know, you're trying some stuff, whatever, but when it's not working, you need to, you need to make the changes. You need to find a way to go and shift the momentum. And like I said, not just this game, but through the entire season, Ole hasn't proved to be that manager just yet. Right. You know, he, he, he's not somebody that seems to be able to change the course of the match in the way that Sir Alex Ferguson and other great managers have been. And so, especially against a, a subpar side like West Bromwich Albion, you as the manager have got to find a way to make not only make the changes that need to be made, but also to motivate the players to step up their game. And right. that just didn't happen today. Okay. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Yeah, I'd, I'd go with a three. The team's too predictable. Like, it, it comes to a point now where teams, if it's a smaller team, they know what team we're going to play. If it's a bigger team, they more or less know what we're going to play. It's, we're easy to play against. It doesn't affect games. From for me, if Ole was serious and wanted to send a message out, when Lindelof did that, half time you're coming off. That sends a message to him and the whole team, and you want a reaction. Uh, same thing with keeping Fred on for so long. You know what you're gonna get with those guys. We're one one at half time. Change even sometimes some of the elite managers change the formation. Oli doesn't do that. Right. Change the formation. Do something to make them change the way they're playing. Don't just make like for like substitutions and expect different results. It's just yeah, it's too predictable, man. Too, too predictable. And making changes with like the, the the thing, like I said earlier, having five substitutes on the bench that were defenders against West Brom. For me, that's a big... Today, like, Maxa could have helped us in this game. You had Diallo on the bench in the West Ham game. Today, he's not even in the team. Like, at least give us a little... a bright spark, something different to see. And oh. today was a perfect day to do it. The team that's, like, near the bottom that are, are struggling with confidence. Right. Joe. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And yeah, he gets, man. yeah, solid three for me. He was just good. I, I like the initial lineup, but clearly, tactically, uh, he was outdone, Big Sam. Um, wow. Nothing much you can say about that. It's, it's terrible. But yeah, just like um, uh, the other gentleman was just saying, like teams know us. They know what we can do. They know what we can't do. And they know we can't, we can't be aggressive on uh, with the low block. So you know, just a three. Bams. Yeah, I totally agree with the guys. Thank you. Um, <laughs> was, um, yeah, by issues of play, one, no need playing two, two CDMs. Um, so lineup was not good. Thank you. Yep. Down, yes, sir. Um, that man, Ole is in in-game management, as you've seen every single time. There's nothing wrong as... Um, as you guys have said, there's nothing wrong in him making a change, uh, taking Lindelof off, even before halftime. I mean, 
Mourinho has done it. If he's seen something wrong, he's going to change it real quick. He doesn't care if it's first half. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He will. That's that's the, those are the kind of things that a manager that's trying to make a statement. That's that's what you do. Forget what everyone says. You see the problem. Make a change. Like change it. And he keeps just. I, I mean, again, Ole has reached the ceiling. But yeah, a, a three. I would have even gone as low as a two, man. It was just two, terrible. Three? Right, right. Overall, the whole team performance as a team. The all thirteen players as a unit. Josh, what are you going to grade the team today? Reference to how they they responded from the goal, how they tried to score. What would you give the team performance today? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a four from me. Um, again, just a, just a a really disappointing overall performance um you know like like i've said regardless of whether we've got pogba out and stuff a team like west bromwich albion we, we, we've got to be beating and we should be beating them comfortably um so it, it just yeah uh, for, for me that's a four okay united team as a collective unit today yeah uh, disappointing four gets the low block people are saying to me but city drew with them the struggle but for me City have got players that are missing and they demolish other teams. We don't do that. So if they have an off game, everyone can have an off game, like I was saying before, but yeah. he, like I think there was a quote being said in the today. I don't know if it's true because I've not checked today that Oli said something about it's not his job to make players happy or something like that. And it's like, where's that come from? Like you need to get a spark out of these players when they're feeling low. I watched the, the podcast before. And it was, it was saying that, like, Gary Neville and Roy Keane, they'd be in the change rooms, and if a player was, like, finished training, they'd be like, play, like a youth player, they'd take the, like, someone like a Greenwood or Marshall, they'd be getting changed, and they'd be like, what are you doing? We're going in the gym. We're going to have a session in the gym. Or if a player was on his phone, they'd be like, what are you doing? We've got a game. Get, get ready for the game. It was like constant pick-me-ups, and that extra one or two percent, over a period of time, adds up to 10%. And if you keep doing that, it's extra and it's it builds everyone up, but it just doesn't feel like that's happening. It just feels like people are too comfortable. Like, Shaw's got better, competition for places there, whereas there's too many players that know they're playing week in, week out. So oh, it's yeah. just, like, look at, I always compare it to Man City where I say, Laporte, star man last season, struggling to get in the team this season. Cancelo Stones has come from nowhere and he's thought, you know what? It took me so long to get here and get this place. I'm not going to let it go. Whereas too many of these players, they know they're playing week in, week out. Even Maguire. I know it cost 80 million, but he's been bad. Bench him. Then he'll be like, oh. And it sends a statement like, no one is indispensable. Safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So, Good point. Yeah, oh. Joe, the team performance today as a collective. As a collective, uh, definitely going to give the team about a three. Um, but yeah, it, it to me, I feel like even tactically, um, tactically, we should be able to dominate this team just off of talent alone. Like, yeah, how did we I, not? I, we've said that all the time. It's you know, sad. Really sad. It's, you know, it just it really shouldn't. This team, the amount of talent that's on the squad, really should be making Ole look a lot better. <laughs> than he that than he's looking right now, but that just goes to show just how tactically poor we are. So yeah, wow. and it, it's just bad execution. I don't know if this is bad execution or just poor tactics, but this is Sam Allardyce again and another low block team. And if, again, we're here the same position, feeling like we've regressed. So three for this team. Bams. Yeah, three four, very poor. Poor performance as a as a whole. Yeah, I mean, and, and everything starts from the manager. It starts from the manager. It starts from his lineup, his tactics, what he's trying to achieve against uh, a team that's the bottom of the table. We should be beating these teams. Um, I mean, it's um, is a repetitive thing that we've seen season after season. Um, we don't. We're not able to 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 really beat these teams well. These these teams that it's so it's so. That being said, no improvements. Um, but yeah, the whole yeah, it's I mean three, four, man. Give it a two. <laughs> we should be beating West Brom easily, and we can. So 
So. Well, uh, I'm going to give Joe a quick, a quickly, a, a, a few minutes. Joe, uh, everyone has talked about the performance today. They've talked about how bad United were against Sheffield United, against the team. Yes, we all knew set pieces was going to be United's uh, Achilles' heel. But do you think United should have done better with the first goal that they conceded? With Lindelof, do you think he was fouled or he should have done better? Because he did come on his side. Yes, he was fouled, right? Yes, that should have been a foul. Yes, that was a blown call. But what stays true is Lindelof constantly, constantly getting punked in the box. I'm sorry, man. You are a center back. How tall is he? I, we, we can't, we cannot have a center back at Manchester United that is so easily put off the ball. It, we cannot have center backs in, in Manchester United, they're so easily willing to release the ball to the goalkeeper instead of attack the ball. Instead of like nobody, Maguire and Lindelof, I don't know whenever they play, it seems like the last thing they want is to defend in the box. They, they always want to leave. It seems like they want to try to leave it to the hair. I don't, I, I just don't understand it. Lindelof, yeah, this is something we haven't seen with, with we haven't seen it in a few. I would say maybe a few months, and he seems to have been able to get away with it. But yeah, it, it exposed him again. He's too easily put off the ball. Either he needs to start lifting some weights, or we need to move him on to another uh, to another squad. I don't think the bench is good enough for him because of his wages, so he needs to move on. So, uh, I was reading an article. It, it was surprised. I, thought, I don't know if it was a joke. Um, Ole said Phil Jones still has a part to play this season because he's back from injury. Now. I thought. Really? All he's taking the piss now. He, he is he's, taking. He's trying to. He's trying to. You know to, what he's saying now, though. He's, 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 he's no, trying not to diminish his value. He's yeah, trying not to. Yeah, because he's got. He's still got four years left, and if he wants to sell him, he can't say that he's useless. Yeah, he can't say he's terrible. Yeah, no one's gonna pay the money for him, so he's got to try. And... They gave that guy yeah, but... five-year contract. I still think the person, which is Ed Woodward. Needs to be prosecuted because you, I, I, you I, I think he's got some <laughs> that he knows the way certain people in that club. I think he he must know some dirty secrets about the club because to get that contract, like well, five years, and he only oh, gets injured when the console is open. If, if Jones, he's not playing, how is he getting injured? He plays for five. What this season has he come? No, we're already in what? game what 20 plus, and he has not been played. He hasn't played a game. Man. See, that's that. You know what's crazy though? Like we're over here and we're not we're not eating, we're not buying the bullshit that uh, only is serving. Like what? Who, like who is he trying to? Who is that message for? Is he? Is that message for recruiters? No, no, no. Like, I can't imagine to... any manager or any front office organization listening to that com- to that statement and being like, oh, I didn't know Phil Jones was an option. Maybe now Phil Jones. No, nobody thinks that, like everybody knows Phil Jones is dead food. Like everybody knows this. No, so, no, but like, it's better. But as a manager, you don't, even though everyone knows, you're still not, you, you I mean, it. you're not you're not gonna talk negative about your player when you're trying to sell him. Yeah. Because if you talk negative about your player, you only you only worsen the chances of him being so. I mean, you you at least want to try and get something for him. So you're gonna be positive, even though when you know he's trash. But, That's see, this is this is all, what I, yeah. Okay, Ben. I, all the time. W- w- I don't understand how you have more confidence that we can sell Phil Jones with that contract <laughs> I'm not more saying I have than confidence. we have our I'm chance not. of winning the league. Dude, Look, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying that I have a confidence that we'll sell him. I'm saying that if I was in Ole shoes, I would do what Ole did. You don't you don't speak bad about your players when you're trying to get rid of them. It's just, you, can, you can you can you can I speak bad. You can, you can you can tell the truth without necessarily speaking bad about a player. Nobody, nobody. Uh, when but why would he? You okay, may, okay so truth, if, what if he just if lied? Get, what if he just lied and said that? That's what he did. Bill he Jones, lied. He lied. He lied about he Jones. Lie. He, that's what he did. He lied. Lied so he can come in there. <laughs> just, the thing with Jones, he, he was very close to going to Newcastle. Not last. I think it was last season on loan. But well, United said they don't want to loan him. You have to buy him. But the problem is, he's on around 80 to 100 grand a week. Exactly. And no one's going to pay him that. And he, exactly. he doesn't want to take a pay cut. So he's just thinking, I'll just sit here on my wages. Whereas a lot of clubs, they'll be like, you've got no 
chance of getting in this team, go and train with the kids to the point yeah. where you'll be like, I need to get out of here. Whereas yeah. Oli ain't going to do that to him. Like, look at people like Tevez, Adebayor. They've all put, been put with the kids. Go and train with the kids. And then eventually <laughs> you get to a point where you, you want to get out of the, the club. But, yeah, it's not going to happen with him. Josh, oh, let, me, oh, let yeah. me hear from Josh quickly. So, Josh. no, well, I think one thing to, uh, you know, it, it's not that anyone by Ole going and saying whatever, that anyone is actually going to be fooled into thinking that Phil Jones is good, right? But that is the kind of thing that can be taken into account when there's negotiations for some kind of transfer. Because I guarantee you uh, the the agent or whatever, you know, or whoever is going on the other side is going to be, in, you know, whenever Manu says, oh, well, we want to sell them at this, they're going to be like, hey, your own manager goes and says this, and that's going to go and decrease the value of that, right? Exactly. So, you know, from Ole's perspective, you know, you're not going to go and talk that much shit about your player because not that you think anyone's going to believe you, but that's going to be used against you in right. any transfer deal. Exactly. That Very correct. You and Ben's exactly. make sense in their represent. I, I, I see your points. Well, uh, uh, wait a minute, so- wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you think that what Ole says is, is going to be used like, look at the contract, look at his form, and look at his injury record. It's done. Like, you are not, we are not going to get, okay. I'm saying, we are not going to get more than $5 million to build. Okay. <laughs> That's I, I, I think they'll, they'll okay, probably go. get 15 or 20, bro. Take that no, to the wait, let me ask what? you a question. Joe, let me ask you a question, right? You know if I have a car car and I'm not really, I haven't been dri- driving it for a while. I'm trying to Let's sell it to in. you, right? The air condition is bad, right? Um, you it's think I would tell you, oh, the air condition is bad, so you can buy it, or I'll tell you, oh, man, everything's working fine. You can do. Will I? Why would? I, is it? You think I'll tell you the air condition is bad to, to sell you the car? No, you're not. But if okay, I know that you. that car's been thank in a you. garage that, for the last three years, that, 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 you answered my the, question. You've answered that's what my it question. is. I would like to. I you. know. I will polish it up a little bit. I'll I'll just polish it up and just make it look yeah, but, good for you. But which is what, what Ole has said. Oh yeah, he has a part to do in the team. And then he but said, what okay, if, well, even though he's been sitting on on the bench all this, or he's not been he's not been playing, but uh, well, maybe maybe I'll bite on that. But what if I already know? What if I already know that that car's been in the garage, broke down for the last three years? It doesn't matter. And then you try I'm to sell gonna, sell it to I'm, me. I'm, I'm still gonna lie to you that everything's working fine to get you to buy it though. No, no, but like but someone it, will someone will get it. No, a better a better analogy is gonna be like, okay, you know that the air conditioning isn't working perfectly, but you're not exactly sure. Like maybe it's still blowing cool some of the time, right? <laughs> but you're not exactly sure. Whereas if Bims comes out and goes and says, dude, this, this fucker doesn't work at all. Well, then you're going to be just like, okay, well then that price is like rock bottom. Whereas, you know, I'm just saying whenever negotiations yeah. happen, they always use statements like that as leverage. They do. Yeah. Because it, especially when you put the out there. Yeah. Okay. Totally I'm just saying we already had rock bottom with Phil Jones. Uh, uh, right. That, right. Uh, it off. Uh, That's before, a before, before we round up, uh, Joe, what we asked the what we asked the lads earlier on was, is it officially over now? Title of, officially over? Yeah, it's officially over. Oh, it's okay. officially over. I see. I see. Ben's moved closer to Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting to hear this, man. I've I, I've been waiting to hear this. It's been a long time coming. Because I knew it was going to come. It's just. It's just oh, I mean, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, oh, we 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 saw it. I mean, United, I would say, if, if they're honest to themselves, if they're honest to themselves. Okay, we had a Mason shot say, we had so many off the line, and we had Maguire one hit the post. Meanwhile, their striker, Umba, Umba, um, what's his name? Umbayi, Umbayi, had that cross that Lindelof missed, and he just missed it. He was one on one of the keeper. Then the second one, Linda, I mean, Maguire and the Gaia, what they were doing, I really, whether he speaks to him, like, come and get the ball, or, I mean, it's so, you're right in front of him. I mean, he could see on here, you, he must be able, there's no crowd you in the know what? When, when you play centre-back, I play centre-back, sorry, pro the managers always used to say, don't, don't stop unless the keeper calls it. If you're yeah. there, take responsibility and deal with it. Don't, don't wait for... The unknown. 
the, the, ball ball was in, the ball was in front of Maguire. How did Mbaye go fr- in front of him? That guy fell down like a like a sack of potatoes and was one on one with the Gaia. Maguire. Do you know what it is? I think with Maguire, you know, everyone used to talk about Van, uh, Van Dyke saying that he doesn't get dribble pass. I think he's trying to do that. He doesn't want to get exposed, but he hasn't got the anticipation to read the game. So it's almost like do what you're good at and stop trying to be a Van Dyke or another centre back. I mean, he needs to just go back to basics. Well, we have officially... So now, how many points are we behind City now? Today is now eight, seven. right? Or seven. I think, I think so they get, seven. they've got a game in hand. Yeah. If they win the game in hand, it goes to ten, right? Ten, yeah. Wow. You see, you see, you, you see how these points start to get worse? Yeah. Three weeks ago, it was what? Two points? One point were actually leading them a couple of weeks yeah. back. We, we were ahead with a game in hand. Yeah, on the same point, so one point. There you go. Sheffield United, zero points. Everton, one point. Yeah. Today, one point. So in nine points, we're taking two. That is why now people can now believe, like, titles are never handed out in January or February. It's got to be in May. For me, the biggest, the biggest time to, to take a claim was the Liverpool game. They were there for the taking. Yes. They didn't take that chance. They no, didn't even no. ask them. They were in bad form, and we just You were very right. I forgot those games. Draw. Yeah. Those yeah. are the guys. Who yeah. put a marker there, win the game, and then we're like, oh, United are serious. If you think about it, yeah, we, we, we knew nil with uh, Liverpool. Nil nil with Arsenal. Arsenal, the, the, that game, two chances, and we only created two, fell to Cavani. He fluffed both of them. Liverpool game, I don't know what that game. It was just a weird game. But we were happy to take one point. But Man City go there and destroyed them completely. Yeah. No centre backs, and we we can't go there and say, let's go for the kill, because we know they're going to concede. They were conceding for fun at that stage, so I don't know why we went there thinking, ah, oh, this is the, the the Liverpool of old. They've got centre backs that are not centre backs. We showed too much respect to Liverpool yeah. at Anfield. We showed too much respect to them. I think we did. Yeah. We were. But then we went through it in the cup games, which yeah, which didn't make sense. Go for it in the league, the cup game, then maybe go for a replay if you need to. Right, guys, our next game is on Thursday. We're back to Europa League Thursday and Sunday. So we're going to play on Thursday. We're going to play on Sunday. Our next game is Real Sociedad. Then Newcastle, another relegation team, next Sunday. I'm going to start with Josh. Real Sociedad, how are we going to do? Yo, um, I think Real Sociedad, I think... um... I think we should be able to bounce back a bit again at at this point. I'm not really expecting to see strong performances from our team just based on what, you know, how they've been playing recently, but I would expect Texas to still be able to, uh, to pull off a win. I'd say maybe at this point, again, I, I, I never expect us to keep a clean sheet. Um, I feel like we're always going to concede, but I could see us going and pulling off like a a two, one victory. Right. Okay. Real saucy that Man United first day Europa league. So I was just looking at where they are in the league. I think they're fifth at the moment. Yeah. I know it's being played at um, Juventus' stadium because obviously they can't have any games in their ground. So I think that's going to affect it. But I, I don't know what team Oli's going to play. I, I don't know if he's going to play Twanzebi, Bayi, Van der Bates, players that are not playing, or is he going to go, this is the cup we're going to go for. So for me... I'm just trying to look at the players they've got as well. I don't really know many of these players, but if they're fifth in the Liga, they're, they're going to be a problem, I think. I think they're going to be a problem. And they've got David Silva from um, Man City. Yes. So, boy, I can see him controlling that midfield. I don't know if he plays regularly, but away, away we're normally good, but I don't know, because they're playing at an... It's a neutral ground. I don't think they're going to play like... They'll be conservative, I think. So I think we're going to... I think we're going to struggle, to be honest. Okay. Joe, Man United, Real Sociedad. Thursday night, Europa League. Okay. I don't care. Those three youths that we just promoted to the main team, they need to start that game. All right, we need to start Hannibal. We need to start... Cannibal, I don't care. Um, um, GK, Ungozi, everybody that's in the U team, that's who needs to play in the Europa League, right? Rest all of our players. I do not care about that tournament. 
but but I, they're not registered though. They have to be registered for the Europa Games. You see, yeah. you could you only can't add play about... kids in Europe. The game like this, you can't play kids in the game like this. No, that you could that no, could destroy their, their career if they have a bad game. They can never. They might not come back. <laughs> Benz, Benz, <laughs> man, not yeah. everyone's to see that Europa League. It's a it's tough one because. I predict Ole is going to play uh, greater right 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 economy. He's going to play Maguire and Gonzalo. We're going to sit back and soak the pressure. We're going to give them the money break. He's going to, Ole's going to go back to the standard shell. Right. And defend every man behind the ball is hit the money break. Right. And if we do that, then it, it, might, it might play into our hands. Because this is two legged games now, whereby. Mm-hmm. Goal difference comes in. If you don't deliver, you will be knocked out so easily. Let me run to Josh. Back to Champ- uh, Premier League next Sunday. Away to Newcastle. Another team fighting relegation. I mean, based on our performances that we we saw against uh, Sheffield and some of these others, I again, I, I don't, I'm not really hopeful. Um, wow. I, I, I see us again. I, I, I keep seeing us conceding. Um, so honestly, I could, I, 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 I think we'll probably. Uh, un- unless Ole figures out, he decides to make some change. I see a similar type of thing with no creativity, um, us really not making things happen and going and getting another disappointing, uh, a disappointing one, one draw. Right. Okay. Newcastle next Sunday. I think we'll win that, you know, even though we're not great at home. I know they've got a lot of injuries. Callum Wilson, got his hamstring the other day. Shah got injured. I think there's another player that got injured. The only player I'm worried about is that, said maximum but i think we'll beat them like, okay. i think I, I think we'll beat them to be honest joe man i said newcastle next sunday oh we need to get by until we get by on the starting lineup because i have no guarantees about any games so i'm gonna go with one one it's gonna be one one until by is back in the lineup that's it wow uh ben. there was there was no team i feel secure about now wow with lindelof and Maguire's that parents being in the lineup. Anything's up for grabs, anything. And teams, when they see that, they love it because Lindelof got targeted today. Oh That's yeah, I can see targeted. that. I can see that. Clearly. So until Ole realized that, then, you know, 1-1. One, one. Bems, Man United, Newcastle next Sunday, Old Trafford, can United bounce back? I mean, bounce back, not bounce back to the league title, Chase. No, bounce back. Uh, I think they think that they have the They have the So, so, like, like, what? Last time I got like three injuries. That's going to play back into our favor. I think I think we'll just do enough to just win that game. Right. All right, gentlemen, we have come to the end of the show. Man United won, Westboro won. It officially ended today for the any slim title chances of even when a team capitulates. You have when a team capitulates, you have to be close enough to snatch the position. When they're capitulating, you keep dropping points, you cannot take the opportunity. 1998, United were leading Newcastle uh, Arsenal 12 points. We crumbled. Arsenal were there to cape and they won the league. Arsenal beat us. But United came back the next day and won the treble. And that was a good United team. This team is not even as good as the 98 team. But football is a funny old game. United uh, got done today by Big Sam. Some predicted it during the week, but it is what it is. Josh, representing Houston Red Army, thank you very much. K. Representing UK, thank you so much. Joe and Ben, Houston Red Army, thank you very much for your time. I don't know if uh, what to say at this point. I'm gutted. L- Valentine's Day, we're supposed to get love and roses. We got a snake and one point. <laughs> is all I could say. Hey, for me, we, we can take glory, glory, man, United as always. We, oh, we'll we'll be back at it and we'll we'll keep moving. We'll keep chucking. We're about it. That glory, glory, man, United. I'll see you guys on the other side. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're watching us. Thank you very much, guys. Thank Happy you. Valentine's and yeah. say, make sure you buy your, your, your partner something lovely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sneak it out.